Now, firstly, just say, let me say a few things about Nazareth. What's special about Nazareth? Well, the most special thing about Nazareth is, I suppose today, in terms of the Israel-Palestine conflict, is that Nazareth is the only Palestinian city that survives 1948 as a Palestinian city. There are no others in Israel. There's Akka, Haifa, Lid, Ramli, Jaffa, all of these cities, but they become Jewish cities with a small Palestinian population attached, in many cases, a kind of ghetto population. We have one model of possible coexistence, the nearest we have to a model in Israel, it's Haifa. It's not a very good model, but it is a sort of model. Everywhere else, the Palestinian cities disappear in 1948. Only in Nazareth does a Palestinian city survive. Why does it survive? Well, it really survives because of that big spire, because of the holy sites here, and because it has a large Christian population. It's actually not supposed to survive. We know from the, the archives and work, the, the work of Israeli historians like Ilan Pape that actually the intention is to destroy Nazareth, or not destroy it physically, but get rid of the population, expel the population here, just as has happened in all the other Palestinian cities in Palestine that Israel takes as what becomes a Jewish state. Now, why does Israel want to get rid of all these Palestinian cities? Well, if you think about it, it's not really so surprising. If you're, if you're worried about creating a Jewish state on a Palestinian homeland, you're worried there might be a little bit of resistance to that idea. Okay, where's that resistance gonna come from? It's gonna come from the cities. It's gonna come from the intellectuals, the educated people who are sitting around in cafes, they have that kind of spare time on their hands and can plot and think about how to stop this. It's not really gonna come from the very isolated villages where small populations working in subsistence farming who are you know, really deeply engaged in this issue. They're, they're working 14 hours a day to survive. These people probably haven't got the time on their hands to be really strategizing very cleverly. And they're also very isolated. This is before Facebook and all that kind of stuff. You know, you're, you're in your little village and you don't see anybody else for weeks on end. So Israel is much less worried about the villages, but it is very worried about the cities. So its first task is to clean out the cities of Palestinians, the elites and the educated uh, class in Palestine. And that's actually what it does. And if you look at the history, the first uh, places Israel tends to attack are the cities. So uh, what happened in 1948 is David Ben-Gurion, he wants to get rid of Nazareth, just like he's got rid of all the other Palestinian cities. He don't want any Palestinian cities to survive. And so he tells the man who's leading the attack in July 1948 on Nazareth, a, a Canadian Jew called Ben Dulkerman, he says, clear out the population. Now, Ben Dulkerman, he's fought with the British in the Second World War. He's probably been following the news. He knows about the Nuremberg trials and all that kind of stuff. He knows that there are now clear definitions of what is a war crime. And what he's being asked to do is commit a war crime. Now, he's committed lots of war crimes. There were lots of war crimes committed in 1948. But the difference with this war crime is the world will be watching, because it's Nazareth. It's Christian, lots of Christians there, holy sites. It's not like, you know, kicking people out of Sephora, which is a Muslim village just over the way there. Nobody noticed that, but they will notice ethnic cleansing of Nazareth. So he says to David Ben-Gurion, I'll do it, but only if I get a written order, i.e. the buck won't stop with me. And De David Ben-Gurion, of course, isn't isn't in the habit of writing this stuff down, so he doesn't give him a written order. And so Dunkelman allows the population of the leaders of Nazareth to surrender. And that's the only reason Nazareth survives. It's a mistake.